Hi there. My name is Zachary Arnold. I'm a college student and a computer science major. Recently, I got the opportunity to spend an entire month learning about electronics, circuits, and more specifically, Arduinos. By the end of the month, I had this cool LED mask that I could control with my phone. I'm going to show you the process of how I put it together. First, we have to talk about the parts. You can do this in a variety of ways, but just for the sake of this project, I'll show you exactly what I got. I got the Elegoo Uno R3, which is exactly the same as an Arduino Uno R3, the One Shield Plus for iPhone and Android, a reel of WS2812B LEDs, a soldering kit that was provided by my school, an airsoft mask, a yard of black polyester fabric, black felt, a sewing kit, black electrical tape, duct tape, a AA battery holder with a snap connector, and a DC power connector. If you're interested in making one of these yourself, check the description for links to all of these items. Now that we've gone through that, we can start talking about the process of putting it all together. Once I had all the parts, I started putting together a plan. I figured out how many LEDs could reasonably fit in the mask, and mapped out rows of LEDs, and how many LEDs could fit in each row. Then, I tested the LED strip to make sure that they all worked. I made sure to buy an LED strip with copper connections between every single LED. That way, I could cut it into pieces, in between any LED, and use wires to put them back together. I also tested out the One Shield board with the Elegoo board to make sure that the Bluetooth worked. After I tested the Bluetooth, I felt ready to move on to the next step. I cut the LED strip into the rows that I had laid out beforehand and removed the protective rubber that was covering them to expose the copper between each LED. Once that was done, I taped them all down the way I wanted them to be positioned in the mask and then got to work on soldering the connections back together in the new formation. This was a tedious process that took several hours. At one point, I messed up and connected the copper that controls the power to the copper that takes in data from the board, so I had to remove that LED altogether and solder in a new one. You can see the connection here, where I had to solder in the middle of the row. After fixing that and checking the connection several times, I got through the rest of the soldering. Then, it was time to test that the lights worked, even in their new formation. After that, I started thinking really hard about how to put the lights in the mask. First, I laid out some strong duct tape, then put the LEDs directly onto it, making sure that they were still in their rows as much as possible. From there, I covered all of the exposed wires with black electric tape just so that they would be less noticeable in the mask. I tested again to make sure we were still good to go, and basically tested between every step. I put down more tape to make room for my eventual plan to sew the LEDs into the mask. I cut off any excess tape, and felt like I had a pretty compact product put together. I made sure that it fit well in the mask before going any further. After that, I pulled out the fabric that I wanted between the LEDs and my face. I ended up buying way too much of it. I had never sewn before this project, so I watched a few YouTube videos about it and did some practice stitches on some random fabric. After that, I started sewing the edges of my tape rig to a large square of fabric, one that was big enough to then be sewn into the mask afterwards. This process got much easier as I kept going through it. After testing one more time, I prepped the fabric for the mask. I started by trying to sew into the tough outer part of the mask, but that proved to be too tough to get a sewing needle through. After that, I decided to just sew everything as close to the edge of the mask's metal mesh as possible. After finishing up with that and cutting off any excess fabric, I had a pretty solid looking mask. The next step was to get the board and the battery mounted to the back of the mask so that I could walk around without having to be plugged into a computer. 
I started by making a little pouch for the 9 volt battery that fit on the bottom of the back of the mask. I ended up having to switch out that battery for a different power option, but we'll get to that later. I then sewed the board onto a stiff piece of felt. I tried to glue that to the back of the mask using fabric adhesive, but that wasn't nearly strong enough, so I just sewed it straight onto the back. By then, I was nearly done. I had a pretty much working product. I suddenly began running into a weird problem. Sometimes, when I played more complicated light patterns, the program would crash and the lights would get stuck. After some searching online for answers, I figured it out. Apparently, 9 volt batteries are not the greatest for consistent power. Their voltage tends to drop after a while. If the voltage drops to less than 5 volts, the Arduino can't sustain the program, and using the more power intensive designs was making that happen faster. To fix this, I swapped out the 9 volt battery for 6 AA batteries in series with each other. I did this because 6 AA batteries supply the same amount of voltage as a 9 volt battery, but with a more consistent current. I made sure to buy a case for these batteries that had the same power adapter as the 9 volt battery, for simplicity's sake. After making this switch, it worked perfectly. It became a little heavier and hard to keep on my head, but some adjustments to how tight the straps were took care of that. I had a lot of fun putting this project together. It's something that I had wanted to do for a long time, but just didn't have the knowledge or time to do. I'll definitely keep working to improve the mask with some different light designs, and now I've got the knowledge to make more projects like this in the future. If I ever get around to wearing the mask in public, I'll try to take some videos for y'all. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment sections below if you have any questions or if you just want to talk about the design of the mask.